By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And I'm sitting on the left and I'm playing with my Orbitron deck. Uh, with that's with white red and a lot of artifacts and I'm playing against dead guy ill on steroids So that is white and black with that blue power splash And I'm opening here playing a mox ruby and an Urza's mind turn once that's a great start for me But look at what my opponent is doing here Bam he's slamming a black lotus on the table and what will his follow-up play be? Am I going to see a Juzam Jin here? playing a factory and second the lotus and he's playing the picture that you can see on his play mat already the hypnotic specter here playing the mox pearl and i'm playing a fireball of two here on the hypnotic specter so that's great and i'm also playing a strip mine so he has to start all over again having no permanence on the board and he's playing the underground sea and i'm playing an urza's tower And let's see, there's a scrubland and there's a mock sapphire. And here I'm playing a disenchant over the mock sapphire, so doing that end of turn. So I'm I'm going for his uh, for the mana deny plan, obviously here. Um it's not really working because black has a thing called dark ritual. So maybe I should have thought about that before I made that decision. And there's a Suchi hitting the board now. Uh, quick disenchant, and there's the winter orb. Now that's another reason for me to kind of take care of those artifact uh, manas because um, Winter Orb is just not very effective if your opponent still has their Moxen around or their mana vaults or soul rings or you know, you name it. So that's always kind of an extra thing in the back of my, my head because I'm playing with Winter Orb. Playing a Relic Barrier here, so you have that combo going Relic Barrier, Winter Orb. It doesn't really seem to affect my opponent much and it looks like I'm out of cards. So that's not good. I have two towers and two mines, by the way. So unfortunately, I don't have Tron yet. Tapping six here, playing a Triskelion, one of my strongest creatures, but there's a very quick Swords to Plows here. And what I usually do is, and you can see it here, I ping my opponent for two, and then uh, Triskelion kills himself so that it goes through the graveyard and I can get it back with my Archaeologist. And here is my Argivian Archaeologist. So usually it gets it gets killed pretty quickly, but you know, if it can only if it can survive a single turn, then at least I can um, I can activate it. Now we're having a little rewind here because I forgot about my own winter orb. So that was a little misplay on my part. So I have to like untap and tap the lance again and we'll have to look at what was the situation. Obviously, I can just, you know, now use the Relic Barrier, but I want to use it at the end of his turn because he, he has that Mishra's Factory that he can activate. So I kind of want to keep that option open. And now my opponent is playing a Black Knight. And end of turn, I'm now using my Relic Barrier. And giving my opponent the opportunity to respawn, but it's okay. So I'm untapping everything, and now I can activate my... Archaeologist. Not sure why I'm tapping a ruby here. Oh, that's in these are bitter baller, by the way. It's a Dutch snack. It's very good. Very tasty. And playing a howling mine. And that, that's a great combination with the relic barrier because I can tap the relic barrier. So that means that my opponent is only drawing one card a turn, but it untaps and then my, my draw step before my draw step. So I get to. Um, draw two cards so that's great it's good news for me but unfortunately there's a quick disenchant and I like this play because you're taking away the relic barrier meaning um, that he can also take advantage from the howling mine and he's attacking me with the black knight using a dark ritual here to uh, play the Sengir vampire And we're pretty close. We're 18 against 17. And I just really like the Sangir Vampire. I mean, what a cool creature. Very flavorful. And I just remember playing with those when I started Magic uh, during Revised. 
Actually, actually, my brother played them. I didn't play black at the time. Playing a Triskelion here, uh, it's a 4-4. Four, four. Do have to pay 6, though. And here you can kind of see the weakness of this Relic Barrier plan. If your opponent is able to disenchant the barriers, then you can get into a situation that you see right now where I'm actually having more problems with my own Winter Orb than my opponent. And attacking him with the Triskelion. And he's taking the damage, so he's going to 13 as well. And it's going to be interesting to see if I can do anything against... And there's a Disenchant on the Winter Orb in response. I'm sourcing his Sengir Vampire. I wanted to say, what can I do against the Sengir? And this is, this is always... It feels so annoying when you're the Winter Orb player, when your opponent says, hey, at your end step, I'm disenchanting it. Meaning that he takes the advantage. And now he's attacking with his Black Knight in response. I'm removing the two counters from the Triskelion to remove the Black Knight here from the game. And in my upkeep, I'm actually disenchanting the Underworld Dreams that he just played. Meaning I don't have to take the damage because now I go to my draw step. Attacking here. And he's animating his factory. And I believe I actually forgot about this... Uh, factory because it was all around it was, it was there in the corner you know so i'm playing the swords now kind of i was very lucky that i, I had that swords um and so i'm able to kill it but it does mean that he loses two life but he gains three life so in the end he gains and gains a life instead of loses life and i'm playing a swords here taking a damage from the city of brass And, but I can I can now tap the Howling Mine and get my combo back again. My opponent is quickly disenchanting the Icy Manipulator. And the Icy Manipulator is just a very strong card. I only play with one copy. But whenever I play it, my opponent wants to get rid of it. So that's kind of how I know that, okay, this is a strong card. And look at my opponent here. He's top decking an Ancestral Recall and then drawing into a Demonic Tutor. Oh, come on. And what is he going to look up? I mean, if he plays with a balance, I would say a balance. But not all dead guy ill decks play with a balance. And there is a balance. Okay. Wow. So again, bad news for me. But hey, I get to draw two cards. Let's see what I can do. Playing a Soul Ring, that's not really going to help me. Playing another Triskelion here. So that's good news. And you know, those Triskelions, you know, the damage they do, I mean, it helps. Playing a Suchi now. Having Tron actually activated with that Urza's Power Plant. So that means that Urza's Mine, Urza's Power Plant, they all give two mana instead of one, and my towers give three mana. And as you can see, I'm casting Colossus of Sardiana. This is just a badass card. It's a 9-9 nine, nine for nine. It has Trample, and it's very cool. And unfortunately, my opponent has a Maze of If now on the table. But hey, I have three creatures, and he has zero, so I'm happy. I'm just going to attack your swing in, and let's see what he can do. And you do see a Sword to Plowsiers there, so I would definitely use it now. Using it on my Triskelion. And this is interesting. Um, what would you do? Would you use it on um, on the Triskelion as well? I mean, he still has the uh, Maze of If to deal with... Uh, to deal with, um, with the Colossus of Sardia. So he doesn't really need to... Oh, and there's a disenchant. Oh, that's too bad. So there goes the Colossus. Unable to actually do any harm here. But my opponent is very much down on life here. And I'm playing another Relic Barrier. So I have card advantage going again. I have a Maze of If of my own to take care of that Hypnotic Spectre. He's attacking. I'm sending it back. And drawing two cards here. What can I do? Playing another Triskelion. So there have been many Triskelions here. Attacking here. 
My opponent's like, oh, where do you get all these Triskelions from? They're driving me crazy. I play with a full playset. I just, I really like them. And I really like the combination of, of playing with Tron and playing with like heavy artifact creatures, obviously. And the Triskelion is just perfect for this deck. Let's see what my opponent can do here. Sending it back, obviously. Playing another Relic Barrier. That means that I can take care of his factory as a blocker as well. Playing a Sword Supplies here. So I gain some more life here. Going to 16, attacking with the Hippie, sending it back with the Mace. Drawing two cards again. I mean, just this card advantage is just brutal. Playing another Suchi. Attacking again. And no, no, it looks like he says, you know what, I've seen enough. I'm not going to win this anymore with your engine going. You've won this game. So, wow, this was a great game. I mean, I, I, I think it had a lot in it, a lot of interaction between both players here. Um, just great that I've won with my Orbitron deck. Thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more games, you can click on the links that are appearing right now on the screen, or you can click on the button on the left to visit uh, the channel and check out more old school games. I believe we have about uh, 60, 70 videos up at this moment, so I'm sure you'll find a deck of your liking. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time.